In this video, we're going to build the JK flip-flop using the 74107 chip. Here are the materials that you will need. You will need a breadboard, jumper wires, the 74107 chip, a 2 input dip switch for our J and K inputs, a push button switch for our clear signal, and 2 LEDs. You will also need a total of 5 resistors consisting of 2 470 ohm resistors and 3 1k ohm resistors. You will also need a 6 volt power supply. For the clock signal I will be using my function generator to output the clock pulse. If you don't have a function generator you can build the 555 timer A stable circuit to output a clock signal. Let's start with the connections. We'll start by placing the chip, the dip switch, the push button switch and the two LEDs onto the breadboard. I'll refer to the pins of the components as shown. Note that Q and Q bar refers to the anodes of the LEDs. We'll start by connecting pins J and K to ground using the 1K ohm resistors. Pin 13 of the chip will be connected to power using the 1K ohm resistor. The cathodes of the LEDs will also be grounded using the 470 ohm resistors. Next we'll connect the bottom two pins of the dip switch to power. Pin D of the push button switch will be grounded. Then we'll connect pin 8 of the chip to ground and pin 16 to power. Then we'll connect pin J to pin 1, pin K to pin 4, pin 2 to Q bar, and pin 3 to Q. Pin 13 is then connected to pin A of the push button switch. I will also be connecting a floating wire to pin 13 so that I can attach my clock signal later. After this, you can connect your two power and ground rails together. For my clock signal, I will be using a frequency of 0.5 Hz with an amplitude of 5 volts. We can then finally plug in our power supply and the clock signal. Now here's how the clock signal is going to work. At the positive waveform right here, the chip will take in our J and K inputs from the switch. Then when our clock signal transitions from high to low, the corresponding output state, which can be found from the truth table, will be outputted to Q and Q bar. Let's demonstrate this. We'll first set J high and K low, which will in turn cause Q to be high. Then we'll set J and K back to low for our memory state. Setting J low and K high will cause Q to be low. And setting both J and K high will cause Q and Q bar to toggle. The clear button works by overriding the J, K inputs and always outputting Q to be low. For example, let's put J high so that way Q becomes high. If we press the clear button, Q will be set to low regardless of the J or K inputs.